Good morning, everyone. Okay, let me share the screen. Let's see. Great. Great. Okay, so I'm Mauro Contreras uh, from the technical support team, and today I'm going to talk about our experience with the cluster integration challenge. But first, why do we build a, a cluster? Well, the main objective is to scale up in terms of hydrogen production whenever we, we build this type of things. For example, we can get one electrolyzer and with uh, water and electricity, like a, a simple balance of plant, I can get hydrogen out, out of the electrolyzer. If I get several electrolyzer, I can connect them together and more or less keep the same uh, small balance of plant. But if I want to put 40 or more electrolyzers inside the container, then uh, that becomes a challenge. And when we are able to overcome this challenge, we can get several benefits. Like for example, we can have a balance of plant that can handle all electrolyzers in, a, in an automatic way. Uh, by just providing electricity and water. This is like a plug and play solution. We have more flexibility with the production rates since we can produce hydrogen with only one electrolyzer at 60% production rate or a 100% production rate all, all electrolyzers. We get an easier maintenance. We can isolate a single machine or just a single rack without stopping production. Uh, as all the electrolyzers would be in a cluster, in a, in a cluster, in a container, they can be transported and installed in a wide range of places because it is self-contained. Also, we have many applications, uh, mainly because of this flexibility we have, and we can control this as a whole. It's like a bigger electrolyzer. It's just a like I said before, plug and play solution. So while building our electrolyzer, what did we need? Due to our activity, it was necessary for the cluster to meet several requirements. So we wanted to, uh, for example, install both EL 2.1s and, and EL 4.0. We know that due to the difference in, in the rack spacers and connector, the container or, or this cluster should be easily adapt to any model. We wanted to also work at the same time with the ACDC or DCDC electrolyzer on every spot. Also, we wanted to mix the liquid cooled electrolyzer and the L cooled electrolyzer all together. Uh, we wanted to put them anywhere, basically. Also for some specific points, we want to measure the dew point before and after, if we put a dryer after the dryer, we wanted to know also the hydrogen content in the oxygen and the oxygen content in the hydrogen for a, a rack, for example. Uh, maybe in a future install new prototypes and uh, include everything that make the cluster works inside the container. Uh, this is like putting all the, all the balance of plant inside the container, nothing externally. And of course, uh, what everyone wants is control the cluster remotely, just by accessing uh, through, through the internet. It's basically, if I have to define it in, a, in one word, would be flexible. Then, to accomplish uh, all these points, we had to focus on the following. First, the interface management. We have to uh, properly design the hydrogen outlet line, the purge, the vent lines, uh, the process uh, cooling water supply since we're putting liquid cooling electrolyzers. And also we have to use our uh, an air conditioning system. Uh, the, also we have to focus on the DI water selection and uh, one of the most important thing is the fire and gas detection system. We want it to operate safe and in accordance with the, with the standard IAC 62305 uh, grounded and lightning protection. 
So we had some initial ideas for, for this uh, cluster. Spoiler alert, it didn't finish like this. So our first ideas consisted in a single access to the container uh, with only one door. All the hydrogen production, the chiller, the electrical panel would be everything in the, in the same space. So I, I could access to through the door and have everything uh, everything close to me. Then as we can see here in the drawings or, or in the pictures, uh, we paired two racks to save space. Here in the picture of the right, we can see the, the piping connections, the, the green lines would be the stainless steel piping connections on how to pair uh, every two racks. And then, uh, Ports ventilation, of course, one for the extractor and another one uh, to put on the back of the of the racks, just to save some space. And uh, we can see here also the battery limits. The oxygen vent outlet is far as far away as possible from the hydrogen outlet, for example. Then we have the the usual drains and, and other battery limit ports. Then. Uh, our final design, in order to ease the certification process, maybe in the future, uh, we divided the, the cluster in, in zones. So we physically separated the hydrogen generation side, and the, on the other side, we put all the electrical things, the cooling, the chiller, and the control room. So electrical cables would be in cable trays, on the roof, but they will be under the floor. We put a, a double floor. Uh, then the air conditioning unit, uh, the piping from the air conditioning unit will be also under the floor to force the ventilation towards the roof. And the chiller will be used to cool down both the electrolyzers and the hay back. And like, like I showed before on the battery limits, the H2 perch and the O2 vent would be as separated as possible. So to explain the, all, all the components that we chose on our cluster and to show you also some pictures, we divided the container into the, we divided the cluster, sorry, into the container, the floor and roof panels, the ventilation grid, the water purification system, all the pipings, the fittings, the connectors, also the venting pipes, our air conditioning system, our chiller, and finally safety and the human man interface. So the container, let's start with the container. It's a 20 foot ISO container with standard dimensions where we are going to put six cabinets, so three on one side and three on the other side. Uh, it's, it has a C5 painting. This is for high corrosion environments and, all, uh, and a thermal insulation inside the walls. So in this case, we will have two access doors. We have one, one on one side and, other, and, and another opening on the other side, just to, I mean, because we divided the zones basically. And we're going to put two fans, two ATEX fans uh, on the top of, of the container. Here we can see the battery limit uh, uh, outlets. They are still haven't complete yet, but we're still in progress uh, at this time. So we can see the perch. There is another perch at the other side. We can see the chiller, uh, how you say, heat, uh, heat exchanger towards the environment. Uh, and also the rest of the battery limits, uh, O2 vent and, and the perch and all the drains. Then, uh, as I said before, we divided this, we can say three sectors, maybe. One is the control and cooling room, where we have the electrical panel, the our software with the uh, HMI, uh, the chiller, the water treatment system, the fire central, and the Wi-Fi. So we, we uh, the Wi-Fi because we're planning to control uh, the cluster using either Wi-Fi or Modbus using Ethernet cables. So the battery limits on this um, on this zone will be the tap water inlet, 
the tank train the also the tank train will be uh, joined into the reverse osmosis train the cooling fluid train and the power input on the hydrogen production room we are going to have only the electrolyzers maybe the gas analysis panels and the safety sensors so the battery limits on this zone would be two purges one for each side then one joint uh, oxygen vent and uh, its respective drains, the perch drain, the vent drain, and of course, the most important line, the hydrogen outlet. And finally, on the underflow space, uh, we have the power cables and the cooling pipes, pipes also with the Ethernet cables, uh, of course. About the ventilation, uh, they, it will fulfill two purposes. First, it will it will guarantee continuous air circulation. So it will prevent any type of gas stagnation inside the container. And second, it will be connected to, to our software and will, uh, how do you say, operate in an autom automatic way to regulate the temperature control that will be based on a set point. So I put a set point of, uh, for example, 30 degrees. And if I need some extra cooling, the fans will, will speed up. We chose two fans, two attacks fans for this. Uh, these are the HT3140. Uh, these are attack fans with class F motors. This is the isolation type of, of, of the motors. Uh, they will continuously work in at low speed. And if we need, for example, if there is a leakage detected and we need to extract all the air in the container, the maximum flow rate of this fan can uh, reach 1800 cubic meter per hour. This means like in a, like rough calculations, our container can replace the air in about 20 seconds using these two fans. Then the water purification system, what do we need? It's basically, uh, we need anything that we can just block tap water and it will work and do just the maintenance once in a while. Like uh, we, we, can, we can forget about doing maintenance every week. So we chose uh, the system based in two characteristics. Uh, first, how it's going to work. The reverse osmosis system is going to fill a tank and the tank will have a pump with a pressure switch that will feed all the electrolyzers. So what do we need? We need a minimum flow rate of this uh, reverse osmosis system. If we consider the average consumption of one electrolyzer, uh, it's about 0 0.5 liters per hour, then the purification system uh, needs to provide at least 21 liters uh, per hour uh, bef due, uh, to prevent the, the, the tank uh, depletion. I mean, the, to, to the tank to run out of water. And then if we consider that all electrolyzers needs to be refilled at the same time, we need at least 60 liters inside the tank. So we chose uh, these reverse osmosis system that you can see in the in the descriptions or also in the pictures which have uh, which has like a, a higher characteristics of of what do we need and also we chose a 100 liter tank so we are safe with that what else do we need we need to measure the conductivity so we are measuring the conductivity before the reverse osmosis system after the reverse osmosis system. So if the water quality is not good enough, we are going to drain uh, the water. Uh, uh, so we, we don't feed the electrolyzers with low quality water. And then there is a third conductivity sensor inside the tank. So if somehow the, the quality of the water of the tank is not acceptable anymore, it's going to be drained. And here we can see in the picture on the bottom, the, the conductivity sensor that we are going to install in the tank. 
then the tank will have this uh, outlet with the pump and the pressure switch, uh, as I mentioned before. After this, we have to focus on the hydrogen line. Uh, as I mentioned on the first slide, due to the flexibility we need, we are going to install 4.0s and 2.1s. So we chose a flexible piping. It's a flexible one quarter inch swage lock that we can install directly into a 2.1 or we can use the adapter for the 4.0. Um, if I put a seven 4.0s, for example, then the pipe will be enlarged. So from this uh, one quarter inch, we'll, uh, we'll have a common pipe of every rack of 10 millimeter pipe. And then this 10 millimeter, millimeter pipe are connected to a 25 millimeter collector that will be joined after uh, towards the, the battery limit of the hydrogen outlet. Also, we put isolation bulbs on each rack so we can isolate one rack to work on the rack and we can keep uh, or continue production on the rest. So we will only lose like one sixth of production. Here we can see in the pictures uh, how, are, how are the electrolyzer is connected and uh, the hydrogen outlet where it's going to be placed. Then the venting lines. For the oxygen vent line, we made it completely in stainless steel. It's a 10 millimeter flexible pipe, uh, basically for the same reason. Um, so the, the piping that connects uh, towards the, the rack will be a 12 millimeter pipe. And this 12 millimeter pipe is going to be joined together with the other three racks to a 16 millimeter pipe. And um, then they will be uh, going towards the oxygen vent on the, on the if we, we can say it left side here, you can see it in the picture. So it's stainless steel piping due to the 4.0 recombiner that could uh, raise the, the temperature of the oxygen outlet. Then for the hydrogen perch line, we couldn't follow the best engineering practice I mean, uh, we had to take the design. We couldn't. We couldn't set. The, uh, we couldn't calculate the design or the design of of the of the internal diameter. So we use experimental cases because due to the high flow speed during purge of the electrolyzer, we wanted to dissipate as much as possible the energy. That, the, that is present in the flow while purges. So uh, what we have here is the flexible stainless steel hose will be connected to a 25 millimeter pipe that will work as a collector for each rack. Then each rack will be connected to a DN50 pipe that we can see in the pictures. So in this case, uh, we have two perch exits, one on each side of the container. So one perch for three racks and the other perch for the other three racks. Then we are going to place water traps on, on, on both lines, on the hydrogen perch line and the oxygen vent line. So these uh, collectors will be slightly inclined towards one side and on the end, on, on, on one end, we are going to place these water traps with its respective trains. Then the air conditioning unit. Uh, due to space limitations, and, and, and we had to choose a smaller Havac that, uh, I mean, after some calculations, we, we realize it could withstand a maximum of 20 air cooled electrolyzers. So it's 20 air cooled electrolyzer while the rest could be liquid cooled electrolyzers. So the idea is to control everything automatically by a set point. Uh, this system will be controlled using a PLC. So I put a set point of like, like I said before, 30 degrees, for example, and then everything will work automatically. Then the cooling, of this uh, air conditioning 
system will be connected to the chiller. So the chiller will handle the cooling of it. And uh, also it will force flowing. Uh, there will be a forced uh, flow from the back of the racks towards the top. In th by doing this, we could save a little space in, in the racks. So we could uh, place it a, a little closer to the wall. How we did the calculations or on, on choosing this hayback. So we consider the internal gains, which are the heat generated by the electrolyzer. In this case would be 20 air cool that will um, that, that, that will uh, how you say uh, give the exhaust in, into the into the container. Then a component of the liquid cool that will also give the heat transfer into the air. Uh, that, that will be, for example, the electronic units or some, um, or the convection or radiation of the electrolyzers. And then the external gains that could be the sun and the heat extracted by the fan. By this, we chose this, this uh, air conditioning unit that could go from six kilowatts to 20 kilowatts. In the worst case, where we need maximum dissipation, the chiller should provide a cooling flow rate of almost 3.5 cubic meters per hour, which uh, the chiller can totally do it. Then let's talk about the chiller now. Here we can see the model of the chiller. Uh, it's, it will feed the cooling line, so it will cool down the electrolyzers, and by a flow diverter, it will cool down the air conditioning system. So this will be done in, a, in an automatic way. For example, if we have a more or less a liquid cooling electrolyzers, then more or less flow rate will be directed towards the electrolyzers. So it has a 30 millimeter tube exit out that will be divided into a 25 millimeter tube to, to cool down the air, condi the air conditioning system or um, will keep going until it splits into two 20 millimeter pipe to feed uh, the three racks on one side or the three racks on the other side. Then there is a third division of 10 millimeter pipe towards the single rack and the electrolyzer. Also, we will have a drain valve for this uh, single rack. For every single rack, we will have a drain valve to drain all the liquid cooling uh, or the liquid inside the cooling lines. So we can do the, the before mentioned maintenance. If we can see here in the pictures, pictures the chiller occupies almost one quarter of the, of the container. So it's quite big. Then uh, our safety system. Uh, so it consists on a central system with a zone division. What it has, it has a control unit uh, with a backup battery, the smoke detector, ATEX, of course, the, then the thermal detector, there is also ATEX, and hydrogen detectors. We can see here there is also emergency bottoms, the horn and bacon, uh, and all the cables are fire resistant. So here it's basically if the sensor uh, Ah, uh, I, I haven't mentioned before, we have many sensors. So we can create a map in case of a hydrogen leakage is detected. So we know where it came from first, and then we can like focus on that specific rack, for example. We can also modify the, the whole system to work like, uh, let's put an example. if. 10% of low explosive limit is detected, we can make all the electrolyzers go into idle mode. So stop production. And if we detect a, a, higher, a higher level, for example, 25% of the low explosive limit, we can also cut the power, make, make, uh, make a power cut on the hydrogen generation side. So the hydrogen sensor we selected is a smart 3G uh, C2, which has a catalytic sensor. 
and the exit will be connected to the PLC and we can monitor everything on, on, on our software. Then uh, the electricity. So we chose uh, these, the following electrical components because the container is going to be designed to work at 400 volt um, using a three phase of uh, three poles plus the neutral plus the earth. So as I mentioned before, we wanted to install either uh, AC-DC or DC-DC electrolyzers inside any, any rack. But the container is only AC. So we have, like we can see here in the last picture, we have converters. We, we just plug the AC towards the converter and we have this uh, red and black cable that are the DC outputs. So we can easily exchange one uh, DC electrolyzer for one AC. Uh, I mean, the idea is to be very flexible. Then we added two sockets on the hydrogen generation side, just to for sensors and electrical tools, and of course the, ex the extra socket in the control room for tools or battery charges, so connecting our computer. In the picture of the middle, uh, we can see the Wi-Fi hotspot here. I mean. Then uh, our software, the, the PLC and, and human man interface. So the idea is to detect automatically every electrolyzer when plugged into the Modbus register. So we know we can see if it is air cool, liquid cool, for example, 4.0 DC. And then everything will be calculated automatically. So if we have 10 liquid cools, then we know the flow rate we have to send uh, from the chiller. Then another idea is to also control the single electrolyzer by clicking on the electrolyzer, a, a rack by clicking on the rack or the entire cluster. Uh, something similar to the Napter app that, that, I, that I said, like start all, stop all, or, or something like it. Then, as I mentioned before, we want to control the temperature based on a set point. We can see it also here. And we are going to install gas panels that we can see and control and monitor using this software. So uh, we want to know the dew point. If we have, for example, two electrolyzers and one dryer, we want to know the dew point before and after the dryer, and also the uh, hydrogen content in the oxygen line and the oxygen content in the hydrogen line, and all the alerts or the alarms, uh, whatever the system can show us. Then we have a locate function. So we want to know if there is one specific electrolyzer we want to locate. Uh, we know where, where it will be installed here. And this is what I think is the most important thing is the possibility of creating graph based on uh, selected parameters. So we can see uh, several parameters here. I mean, we have a lot of information that, that is coming uh, from all the sensors into this software. And we want to be able to make a graph out of everything. For example, if, if we see here, we can make a graph of the power consumption versus the hydrogen uh, production. That is the efficiency. Or uh, the water consumed versus the hydrogen production. So it's um, we, we want to achieve that. And then uh, to, to make it more user friendly, we are going to put the colors of our cloud into this software. So it will be easily, I mean, with, with knowing how to use the cloud, you will know how to use this. Uh, this, uh, this software. And as I mentioned before, the connections will be um, through the Ethernet cable for Modbus and Wi-Fi. Okay, just to finish a summary. Uh, this is our experience, and this is a project based on Inaptor's need. So it, it, it doesn't mean 
that there is something you have to follow. Maybe you can focus more on production. We, we haven't. Uh, we focus more on the testing side. So here are the characteristics that the, that the container has. What we like about it is that it's a very flexible plug and play solution. So it's ideal to use it as a test prototype or test new prototypes inside the electrolyzer. Uh, we have saved 10 centimeters on each side by doing this uh, force ventilation thing with the, with the air conditioning unit. And now the racks are easier to access, are safer and comf more comfortable to work. Uh, and I mean, it, this will be for the better, I, I think. Then, of course, there are some things that we, we maybe we need to improve, like for example, pipe dimensioning, as I showed before, the H2 perch, having a two inch pipe uh, would be something like an overkill. Then the battery limit flexibility uh, in the, for example, uh, being more flexible with the H2 outlet. In this case, we, we can only put the container in a specific way because the, the outlet is on a one side only. Then we can optimize some space in the control room because it's, it's just a control room. We don't need to work inside. Uh, by optimizing this space, we could create more space for a single dryer installation. Maybe by, uh, yeah, putting a, a, a one dryer that could handle all 42 electrolyzers. And then for future designs, if we want to focus on hydrogen production, we should focus also on a single type of electrolyzer. For example, we could put just air cooled when the outside temperatures are template, like uh, not, not, not more than 35 degrees uh, on the outside, we can use air cool and just for ventilation on it. And we save a chiller and the cooling lines. And I mean, we, we save a lot or liquid cool if we have only, uh, if we need to install this on a very hot uh, environment, like like I think it was mentioned before, 48 degrees, 50 degrees. Uh, that way it's impossible to cool, to, to cool it down by air. So we, we can install this chiller and this uh, liquid cool solution. Um, and then I, I would say, for example, uh, a flow meter on the hydrogen outlet, maybe to, to control that. Um, this is all. This is all, of course, for further information and, and the lessons learned. Uh, we will share whenever we start our first commissioning. Uh, we we will share it with everyone. So we are very looking forward towards it. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, Mauro, thank you very much for, for the very nice presentation about the, um, about the cluster. Uh, I think this is a very interesting topic for a lot of integrators who are also looking into building um, cluster solutions. Uh, so now everybody still has the chance to drop a few questions in the Q&A section or in the chat. And um, yeah, um, Mauro, let's go through the questions that we have received so far. Uh, one question was regarding the fan. Um, what happens if the fan goes down or if one of the fans goes down in the system? Okay, if one of the fan goes down, let me uh, go back towards the fan. Maybe we can see it. Okay, here. Uh, can you see here? This is a detector. So. Uh, this will detect if the fan is not working and of course uh, trigger a warning. We, we, we can do whatever we want with this, uh, with this information. We can trigger a warning or we can stop production immediately. Okay, very good. 
so another question uh, was regarding power supply. Uh, what power supply did you use for the cluster? Um, I don't understand what with the question. The external power or the external power is 400 volts. So it will be over, uh, could be, uh, we can consider 100 and, and, uh, 150 kilowatts uh, that you need to to actually fit this container. Okay, so yeah. I hope that answered the question. Uh, if well, not, um, please feel free to um, yeah. ask again and clarify um, what you would like to know. Here. Yeah, and if it's the power supply of the 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 PSU of the uh, DC DC electrolyzer, that the one that is connected inside the rack, it's a meanwhile power supply. Okay, very good. Then we have a question regarding the communication um, between PLC and EL. Is it Modbus uh, TCP only, or are there other possibilities, for example, like MQTT? Uh, no, all, all the electrolyzers will be uh, controlled using Modbus or uh, using the cloud. Okay. Okay, then we have a question regarding dryer. Was a dryer installed in these systems? No, um, no, no. The, there is no dryer installed in the system, but we have the possibility to install one, one dryer 2.1, for example, to use it with uh, our uh, gas panels. Maybe, I, I don't remember if we can see it on the presentation here, but let's see if we can find the the picture of all the electrolyzers no maybe we can see the gas panel oh no we cannot <laughs> it's it's on the on the top of this last electrolyzer uh, there is a gas panel that that here we can put for example the first two electrolyzers then a dryer and then connect everything into the gas panel okay Okay, uh, there's another question about the hydrogen lines. Uh, in the picture, hydrogen lines. So we are at this graphic right now already. There was a gas cylinder besides the cluster. Is the manual flow sensor for, uh, is, this, is this manual flow sensor for the whole cluster? Um, let's see, the hydrogen lines. Okay, uh, I think it's this one. This one is a flow sensor for the uh, liquid cooled uh, electrolyzers only. So we, as, as we have a pressure drop in the line, we want to make sure that all the electrolyzers or every rack gets the same amount of flow. So on the first one or the, the rack that is closer to the pump will will receive a higher flow rate if we don't control that. So we can manually uh, set the flow that is going through the, the each single rack. Okay, thank you. Um, then there was a question regarding what uh, are the approximate system delivery times? Maybe uh, I briefly um, answer that myself. Um, so as Mauro explained, this um, container is um, our internal um, AEM cluster, which is catered to, to our needs for internal testing. So as he explained, uh, we have many different options with which type of our electrolyzers to install and to test them. Um, so this unit would not be delivered from, from an APTA, but our system integrators would integrate similar containers uh, for end customers. Uh, but yeah, regarding lead time of the electrolyzer modules uh, themselves uh, can be quite quick. So as we heard yesterday, we will start producing and delivering our EL 4.0 modules in August. And um, still, if you order relatively soon, you can get still units in um, autumn. Okay, then there is a question 
what is the maximum operable cluster capacity? So I, I assume it refers to the uh, production range. Yeah, uh, it could be if we put all 4.0s, it could be 42 kilograms a day. Okay. Then there's a question which is um, maybe not directly related to the cluster, but maybe you can have a look at this as well. Uh, so okay. the question is whether it is possible to connect DC-DC electrolyzers directly to photovoltaic installation, or should we have batteries to grant intermittencies? Um, okay, this, this is hard because um, on the DC-DC, you need a, a, a voltage input. If you can guarantee that between 48 and 60 volts, then everything is okay. But remember, we don't want to uh, cycle the electrolyzer many, many times. Uh, we know that uh, the photovoltaic is very, is very cycling because it, it depends on, on the clouds, on, on everything. Uh, but if you can guarantee that at least or less than five times a day, this could be possible. Of course, it's always better to have some stable uh, voltage input. But okay. yeah, uh, as long as you uh, as long as you follow what the data sheet says, uh, the electrolyzer will be okay. Okay, perfect. Then there's a question regarding uh, factory acceptance test uh, prior to shipment, whether we do this or not. Um, so for our electrolyzer modules um, that we deliver, uh, I answer this briefly here, um, we perform uh, factory acceptance testing before we deliver these systems, yes. Yes, and also uh, in this case will be the factory acceptance test of the cluster, of all, everything that, that is inside the cluster. Then as you say, yes, the factory acceptance test of the electrolyzer, and then maybe a third one of everything working together. Perfect. So there's one more question. Um, I'm not, yeah. Have you separated the AC and DC version of the AM cluster? I think mm. you briefly mentioned something about this. Maybe you yeah. can explain about it again. It, yes, of course. Uh, no, we have the cluster will work uh, using AC and then. Uh, I will show it again here in, in the slides. Then we have these converters that will convert on the spot towards a DC. Uh, it will convert AC into DC. Why? Because we, if we want to make the whole container into DC, we will need like very big bus bars because the current will be very high. <clears throat> so we we are going to do everything I see. And then if you are going to solve, for example, only one rack of DC DC electrolyzers, we use these converters. They are very efficient. So it's over 97% of efficiency. So we, we don't lose much. And we save a lot a lot of weight and a lot of money into the building of this. Okay, thank you very much. So I see that we have answered, I think, all questions that came into the chat so far. So if there are any further questions, uh, please feel free to ask right now. We still have a few minutes before the next session. Ah, okay, I see one more question, which is a little bit related to the connection to PV and production rates. Um, if the cluster would be connected to a PV installation, what would be the operation range? For example, from 30 to 100%, how does it work? How are the electrolyzers connected to the PV installation? Okay, this can totally be, uh, you can configure this and you can, use only one electrolyzer 
it, this is like at 60 percent this is 300 normal liter hour to all of them so the the flexibility is huge is huge so we can use only like a uh, two kilowatts uh, i don't know the uh, at 60 percent it's um let's make yeah 1.44 kilowatts uh, or <laughs> more than 150 kilowatts so this is uh, depending depending on the power input okay thank you Mauro. any further questions ah, okay uh, what are the maximum possible powers for two types of containers 20 feet and 40 feet how many electrolyzers can you fit in approximately based on the el 4.0 um well in in this in our container as we needed to be very flexible we had to split everything in two so we divided the container in two and we lost a lot of space uh, by putting the chiller the air conditioning uh, all the cabling but i think if you focus on only for example air cooled uh, at least you might be able to put like around 50 or 60 electrolyzers inside a container. So that, that could be possible. I'm talking about the 20 feet. Uh, for the 40 feet, uh, I would say maybe double uh, that because, it, no, not double, but uh like at least two thirds because the balance of plant for the 40 feet will be bigger as well okay perfect thank you so we have three minutes left before we go to the next presentation so you still have the chance to drop some questions Okay, it seems there are no further questions. So I would like to thank Mauro for, um, for his nice presentation and for answering all the questions. Um, we will start in three minutes at uh, nine sharp with our presentation uh, by Florian about the AEM multicore.